Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Monday. I welcome you to the 14th episode of The Real World. The 14th episode. I'm here with my co-host. Your boy Santa, come on the house, baby. And we're here with a very, very special guest. Introduce yourself. My name is Judy Sofran, also known as Judith Sofran. That's my official birth name. Shout out, shout out, shout out. Shout out to Judy. She had told me that she wanted to come on the show and speak a little bit about education. She's currently an educator. Tell the people a little bit about yourself, Judy. So I, as Ricard said, I am a teacher. I'm currently teaching high school at Origins, which is one of the schools on the Sheep Shed Bay campus. And I'm really happy about where I am. Previously, last year, I was teaching uh, middle school. I was teaching seventh and eighth grade. And it's just a, a step up. God is really good. That's amazing. That's amazing. God is good. I wanted to basically give a shout out to Judy because first and foremost, she's a teacher. And teachers, to me, has a special place in my heart because of the mere fact that when I was younger, and I'm still young, but when I was, you know, at 189, PS 189, I used to give the teachers a very hard time. And they never gave up on me. They invested in me. And they developed me into becoming the awesome young man that God has called me to be. So I want to give a shout out to all the teachers out there of doing a phenomenal job. So I salute you 100% what you do. I, I wanted to ask you this. Um, how, what made you become a teacher? Okay. That's a really loaded question because I never okay. um, wanted to become a teacher. Okay. Like, I think a lot of us grow up with a negative mindset toward teachers. Like, I think we all kind of put teachers on a very um, low pedestal. What do you say that for exactly? Because of, I mean, like, if you say, mom, like, when she asks you, like, what do you want to be? I want to be a teacher. She's not going to say, oh, that's, that's really great. She's going to be like, are you sure? I mean, w in the environment that I grew up in, okay. not a lot of our parents encourage us to become teachers. Okay. Because one, uh, the pay rate. I, is, is, is the pay good? I don't, I don't feel that it's too low. Okay. I'm, I'm managing. Okay. So I don't feel that. And also because of the amount of work that teachers um, do and the things that they have to deal with in the classroom. It's, okay. it's a lot dealing with students who don't behave, students who don't listen, um, administration. So a lot of us don't grow up wanting to become teachers. Wow, wow, wow. You know? My thing is that how do you feel the system can, can do in regards to making teachers um, feel more comfortable in the environment? What do you think the administration or the government can do, like the mayor and stuff like that? I mean, teachers go through a lot of pressure. I believe you, I believe you. A lot I of pressure you. from, especially the government is, you know, politics. You guys are rated, right? We are rated based on... Who you rated by the students or by the... By the state test scores. Okay. So the exams that the students have to take every year are administered by the state regents. Um, three to eight, those New York State exams, they're administered by the state. Okay. Not the school. So those test grades from one, two, three, four, wow. that's how they're uh, graded, um, are a reflection of the teacher. So if the students do poorly, then the teachers get reprimanded. Literally, and what is, what, what is when you say reprimanded, in what sense exactly? So a principal can take disciplinary action on a teacher who has a low, whose who's students have um, low test scores. But de de define that for me. What does it mean, discipline? So, for example, they can put you on a, a, a what's the word I'm looking for? Suspension? Not suspension, but a... But they'll write you up? They can write you up, but they... they um, Probation? Thank you. That's can, the word. Can, can that also lead to you losing your job? It can if you're on probation and they, they're uh, monitoring you and they're observing you in your classroom. And if you don't show improvement, wow. then you are in many cases uh, capable of losing your job. Wow. So how does that make you feel? I mean, how, about, how, does, how does it make you feel as a teacher and for all teachers out there who are actually doing things for, for children and, and basically they fail the test and stuff like that? How does that 
make you guys feel? Well, also, it's not just the test scores. Okay. So your, rated, your rating is based on classroom observations. Um, the principal or your assistant principal can come in uh, about six times per year throughout the school year and observe you. Wow. It's also based on student feedback. So at the end of the year, the students also take a survey. Um, uh, did they like their teacher? Um, what kind of classroom environment did their teacher create? Wow. And it's also based on the test scores and a lot of factors. So it's not just the state exams. Mm -hmm. So you would say that the job is hard? It's very, very, very hard. So outside from teaching, what else is hard in regards to the work that takes place outside um, teaching? Like after, after you teach, mm -hmm. you go home. You gotta create lesson plans of things that I need. You have to create lesson plans. And also, I have to mention that I am a special education teacher. So okay, that, that is very different. Okay. So you have the general education teacher who is the content area teacher. So that's the teacher who teaches math or science, social studies, ELA. But then we also have this influx of students with disabilities okay right these are students with learning disabilities okay um adhd autism intellectual disabilities things like that and they come in with their own set of issues mm. that a special education teacher has to now modify the lesson that the content teacher creates okay. and modify it for the special education teachers so on top of lesson co-planning together mm. we also have um, Let's get deeper into that. Okay. So, yeah, okay. Sorry to cut you off, but it's called the real world. So we're going to get <laughs> real into it. We're not going to stay. Okay. So I was, See, listening, I was listening good. to Dr. Umar Johnson, right? Mm. And you know, he's a, he's a child psychologist. He was basically saying that schools get paid more money for special ed classes. And the more children that they have in special ed classes, the more money that that school gets. They were also saying something about how black and colored kids usually are the ones that's put into special ed and to get put in special ed you gotta be graded on a test right you take a test and depending on how you perform on that test then you get put into special ed do you feel because i know certain parents they pur they purposely put their children in special classes so they could get money so you get like ssi and they can wow. get their benefits so they don't gotta work they're like oh yeah my kid is slow my kid is this and that but your child not only receives education in school, they also receive education at home. Because you got to teach your kid too. Like, I do it all the time at home. And I know, like, the things that you teach them at home, it transgresses into the things that they learn at school. But some parents, like, they're not equipped to be parents in the first place. So they're, they're raising these kids and they're happy to send them off to school where wow. it's a teacher that takes care of them. And a lot of them is not mentally, it's just discipline in regards to how they behave. And because they got a discipline issue, then they're put into these special classes and they're labeled as having ADHD. Like like a boy, a boys are active, they like to run, they like to Facts. sit, they don't like to sit, like it's easier to get a girl to sit. So like a boy, he don't want to sit, his father would just slap him upside the head or spank him, like sit your butt down. Mm -hmm. But like say for example, the boy is raised in a single pair home, it's just his mom, his mom raising him, he goes to school and he acts up because he's not being disciplined at home, so he gets put into that special class. Do you feel like you have to deal with that? Well, I'm going to start with the first thing that you said about schools getting money, um, more money when they take in special education students. So that is true. But there's also a reason behind it. Because um, historically, like, um, because that's, that's what I'm getting my master's in, special education. So we've learned that historically, um, Students with disabilities have not had um, equal access to education. Yeah, at one time they had to stay home. Because right. They to take them in school. Exactly. And so there was this, as recently as like the early 70s, um, there was this institution in Staten Island called Willowbrook. And this institution, this is where parents would send their kids who were disabled or quote unquote retarded, mentally um, retarded, and they would send them to this institution, you know, and just leave them behind, yeah. you know, thinking that the people there would care for their children. But when they did an investigation on that institution, they realized it was understaffed, it was overcrowded, and the people there were not being taken care of. They sometimes went without food for days. Mm. Sometimes they were just sleeping in their own um, 
feces, bodily fluids, and they were not receiving any education at all. Wow. And it was this institution that really put a highlight on how uh, student or people with special needs were being treated in the United States. And they passed a law. So they passed a law that said, no, we can no longer have this. You, every public school that's federally funded needs to give all special needs students Anybody with, dis uh, with a disability access to education. I so there was a form of discrimination. Exactly. I, I want to basically right. said, I don't know whose friend is this. This is Sandy Phils. Yeah, that's my old supervisor. Shout basically, out to Sandy. <laughs> she says that um, she agreed with you that Woolbrook was horrible. She says an interesting co um, conversation. She said, my, my daughter has special needs, so I, I know what she's talking about. Wow. So you definitely got your A game on point. Shout out to Sandy and shout out to your daughter, Sandy. Definitely. Hope you are right. Shout out to Mr. Mike. Shout out to all you guys. Yes, definitely. And your second comment, uh, second question that you asked her? Um, what was the second question? Oh, do you feel like the education at home plays a role in the education in school? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Because, like, I, um, if my... I can speak from personal experience, like, man, I don't mean to put my bro on the spot, shout out to Sonny if he's watching, but I can definitely say, like, a lot of the things, because Sonny was a boy, like, Sonny was a boy, like all of us, like all of us, boys, <laughs> exactly, like me know, too, you growing know, growing up in a strict Haitian household, daydreaming in class, yes. so trust me, I know, mm -hmm. Play Game Boys, like his attention was, you know, was on other things besides academics. Like he shout out to Jeremiah, today's his birthday. Shout out to you, to <laughs> yes. you little man. Like he's a little active one too. Yeah. <laughs> he started preschool today. That's what's up. Yeah. Hi, Jeremiah. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to his teacher. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, so it's like um, certain. Um, you know, boys are very active. Boys, they're not really, you know, at the, a certain age, they're not really into their education. They're more into, like, activities, hands-on. And But that's also a factor, too. So when you realize how a child learns, not every child learns that's by right. sitting down on a chair and listening to the teacher talk. Okay. So this is where the special education teacher comes in. Okay, so you know what kind of learner this child is. Okay. You know that this child learns visually, this child learns um, auditorily, this child learns, um, they say, kinesthetically, so that's hands-on, okay. touching, interacting with things. So now you have to, in the classroom, provide activities okay. that cater to the, the needs of that child, okay. the way that child learns. I wanted to ask, what is your teaching style? <laughs> I just have to ask that. What is your teaching style? My, so this, this is a very interesting conversation. Why yes, you wouldn't say, yeah, yeah. But also... Remember that I'm still in my second year of teaching, okay, so but I'm still I so far growing. You. Let me just add this in, right? <laughs> I remember a few months ago, Judith hit me up like, like, we need to pray together. And we got like, like, plans. Plan. She's like, oh, we're going to start a prayer group. And so we went, and we went to pray. She was like, like, these kids are stressing me out. You don't understand. I need prayers. I need God to help me. Mercy. <laughs> I said like, that. I do not remember that. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, you don't sit down. You don't listen. Facts. Oh, no. I just need, please, God. I need God to help me. Let's just pray. <laughs> listen, you're, you're, listen, you're doing phenomenal so far. You're doing phenomenal. But the thing is that. But I'm you got him better, though. Like, you got him yeah. right? But, but so far for the two years, right, that you've yeah. been working, yeah. what is your, what, what, what? What is your teaching style? I want to know what's your teaching style. Because like I said, I'm, I'm a big fan of teachers, like I told you. So. Okay, so I believe I'm growing into a more, that social, emotional kind of teacher. Yes. I remember my first year, I came into the classroom, I was so on point, like discipline, like, you know, because, you know, when they see me, they see I'm very Shout young. Shout out to Naomi. Yes. <laughs> I'm about to ask you questions. Don't worry. We got you. Uh-huh. I'm very questions. young, so I had to put on that stone face, that serious or, um, authority figure, you know, leader kind of that that style yeah, that facts. you're talking about, so that they could take me seriously. Of course. But what I learned, like just after a few weeks, was that yeah, they they wanted to learn. That's why they came to school. They want to learn from their teachers, but they also wow. need that emotional side. Like they need to know that their teachers are real. They need to know that their teachers are humans, that they, they are people, and that they have lives outside of school. So I'm beginning to open myself up to the students, which is still hard to do because you have to maintain that balance. Of course. You know, you cannot be their friends. Of course. But I'm learning to, I, I smile. 
<laughs> I smile. I'm not the kind of, like, you know, some teachers who say, I'm not going to smile until December. No, I smile on the first day of school. I tell them about myself. I, t I tell them, like, I'm in school. I, I went to Brooklyn College, got my bachelor's degree from there, and I'm, you know, working on my master's. Wow. Like, I'm very, very open. Wow. But I also really set the expectation, like, this is what I expect in the classroom, and this is how the behavior is going to go, and they, they listen. Wow. Okay, so let's go to the comments. Uh, Ms. Itchen says, a lot of Haitian immigrants tend to be influenced to put their children in special ed, even when they don't belong there, especially children who are born there but speak Creole as their first language. What are your thoughts in regards to this issue? Oh, she's talking about ESL kids, English as a sacred language. Yeah. I feel like the kids that don't speak any English, like, they need to be in ESL so they can learn English, but, like, all children don't learn the same. And sometimes special is not that bad, because if you have 30 kids in one class, sometimes there's kids that fall in the cracks. I like that my kids be in special ed and not get left back and be in a regular class and get left back. I feel like that's more embarrassing. Facts. And you'd be surprised, I because the school that I came from, PS 189, was a, it's actually called the Bilingual Center. Yes. So that school... Which I went from, baby. <laughs> One gate, two. Yes. <laughs> I know. It's a nine. You know what's the thing is that I was only um, only second grade, because, you know, English was my second language, so I was in 2L, but Ms. Dejvah, one of my favorite teachers, you feel me? But after that, I went from the three C's, then B, 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 you know what I'm saying? So I've got to put it out there. You know how they call it A, B, C, B, yes. 4, A, 5, A, you know how they do it. So it's all good. L and the S, L. And that's facts. <laughs> Uh -huh. That's funny. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so it's called PS 189, the Bilingual Center, and the school is um, a school for um, immigrant st um, students. And the whole purpose of the school is to assimilate them into the culture um, so they're learning English while still um, maintaining their, you know, their culture of wow. where they came from. So... Um, you, so what I was going to say was you'd be surprised how many Haitian parents actually when I was there did not want their kids to be in special education class and would not come to IEP meetings, would not what is What is IEP meetings? Okay, so that's a, a term, a special education term. So it's called, it stands for the Individualized Education Program. Wow. So any student who comes with an uh, intellectual disability or any student who has a special need, wow. you have to create a program but for they have, them. Yeah, they have mm. their own they, right. personalized lesson plan. Exactly. Personalized. So, and um, in order to create that... Yeah, you, you, your cousin says, go ahead, cousin. I don't even know Alexandria was your cousin. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a small, it's a small uh, world. Yeah. After all. Yeah. 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 You know. <laughs> Continue, go ahead. Continue, huh? Okay. You do the so mm -hmm. they come in, but in order to create the individualized education program, you need the parents, you need the teachers, you need if the child saw a therapist, you need all of those people in the child's life to sit down and plan the program for them. Wow. Some parents will not come. They refuse to come. I'm not coming. My child does not need this, these services. I, re I don't want my child in special education. They want their child to be in the general education setting. Wow. That's what they want. However, there's another... Why, why do you think that? Why do you think that they, want, they don't want that? I think it's the stigma the associated... Stigma. The Haitians are bougie. Fast. Like, they probably don't remember what else said. Oh, oh, they think they're not special. Like, right? yes. our kids are special. They don't want people to know that. Right. Like, they'd rather their kids be dumb than in special ed. Like... Let's go to the next question. Okay. Um, I see the question. Setting, uh, Phil says, you have to take your time with your children regardless of their disability. You have to do the work. My daughter went special from PK until fourth grade. When the, classific when the classification changed, she went into privately funded programs. They are great. Then Sandy says, um, then Naomi says, hi, Patna. I don't know what that <laughs> is. Hi, Patna, <laughs> because she's my young adult ministry. Okay. Partner. Okay. <laughs> and, um, Sandy says, oh, so some parents are afraid of their children being put in categories, parents have to put in the work. Wow. Yeah. But, and this is something I learned too. So, all right, imagine um, your son or your child says, I want to join soccer. I want to join a sports team, right? Yeah. Okay, you're, you have no knowledge of soccer or sports at all, but you found a training program that you can put your child in, right? Wow, wow. And so you, you put your child into this activity, mm. and then the coach has a parent meeting and sits all the parents down and says, 
you guys need to practice this sport with your child at home. Like, how would you feel as a parent if you heard that? Like that they need extra practice? Yes, that yes, your child is practicing here, you know, every week or two twice a week, whatever it is. But the coach says to all the parents, you guys need to practice with your child at home. That's how they're gonna get better. Some it, parents don't want to put in that word. Right. As a parent, you would feel like, well, that's why I sent them here so you can teach them. Why are you asking me to teach them now? Wow. Like I have no knowledge of this at all. And so a lot of times parents, that's how they feel about teachers. Mm. Like when we say as teachers, you need to help your child with their homework at home. You need to go and assist them. A lot of parents feel like, well, that's why I sent them to school. So you can help them. I wow. have no knowledge in this area. But the thing is, some parents like are dumb. Like I'm not even trying to be politically correct right now. Like some some lack education as in like facts. Some of the things that their kids are learning in school, they don't know themselves. So when a kid comes home like, oh, I need help with my homework, they don't understand themselves to help the kid. That's true. Yeah. So that does that doesn't mean they're dumb. The second what you said after that, that they I'm lack education mm -hmm. is, is the right way. Because, okay. like, for example, our immigrant parents, you know, they came to the United States. They sent us to school, sent us to um, great public schools. Salute, mom. I love you, mommy. You know, like, a lot of... I, and daddy, too. I mean, I, even in my young mind, elementary, junior high school mind, I knew that I couldn't take everything to my parents to ask them for help. You know, there were certain things I knew they wouldn't know. And so that's why my father, and looking back now, I'm so grateful that he, he invested money in tutoring. Yeah. I, I remember summers where we would just be in the library with this boring tutor. Like, why do we have to be, why are we here? You know, but my dad was investing in us, mm. you know, and he was paying that tutor to, to help us. Shout out to Pastor Jude Laws. He was my tutor. Well, I think two years, because he used to be a teacher, too. He used to come to the house and tutor me and my sister when we was younger. Shout out to Pastor Jude Laws. He was a teacher, he was a deacon, and now he's a pastor, and he's a professor. So shout Amen. out to him. Um, your your homegirl asked you a question. She said... Uh, did my wedding, too. That's what's up. <laughs> um, Naomi asked... Yes. <laughs> Naomi asked... Um, she said... Um, what? Oh, before we go to Naomi, going to give another shout out to Sandy. She's... She said that's true. Some people never finish school. That's why they're afraid. Respect to that. Naomi says, what resource should parents whose first language isn't English deal with school teachers that overlook children who are struggling in school? What resources should the parents seek? Should seek? Yes, yes. Man. That's your friend. Remember, she asked that question. Yes. <laughs> so her, remember her. Man. See? I would, okay. Every parent has access to resources, whether they realize it or not, okay? So if you're part of your, a community, a church community, you have access to resources. You have teachers in your community, you have educators in your community, right? You have people in your church who can guide you, even if they are not teachers or in the education field. If they can speak English fluently, then they can guide you, Wow. right? Okay, um, a lot of uh, our schools now are looking for bilingual or multilingual uh, prof professionals mm -hmm. or people on staff who speak more than one language. That's so a they lot of jobs. Translation. Yeah, people that speak Spanish and French and Creole. Yeah. They pay you more if you're yes. bilingual. Yeah. Exactly. So resources, you have human resources. You know, um, because many times the same people who are not fluent in a language are also not fluent techno technologically. Yeah. So I'm not expecting them to go online and find something. But I think that's a social and a cultural issue because you see like three, four year olds, they know how to use iPads and telephones and know how to go on the internet, they know how to use YouTube. But they feel like 40 year olds, 50 year olds, 60 year olds, they don't know how to do it. I think that a lot of these. Parents, they don't want to educate themselves. And like Jeffrey said, shout out to Jeffrey, society does have them occupied with work to the point that they're working to survive and their children is being neglected in that sense because they basically don't have time for their children because they're in survival mode, basically. Um, Sister Man, Sister Thinks, she said, in today's classrooms, they don't teach students the basic English grammar and how to write a full sentence. Do you feel that's, that's not true, so right? So true. 
That's so true? I'm, it's why very, think, why, very, why, why very think true. That is? Because our, um, because the public school system is so test driven. We're teaching to the test. As much as we say we're not teaching to the test, we are teaching to the test. So, so you see like that, that puts a lot of pressure yeah. on the teachers to not teach properly. Like, it's not. It's all about numbers, you saying? It's about. Uh, Share this video, guys. Share this video. Share this video. So Repost it. Come on. Yo, yo, Judy, Judy is it. Judy is ripping it. Ripping it. Come on, Judy. No, it's 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 true. We don't teach the basic grammar, verb, subject, like nouns. We we don't. Like you might get that in the very lower grades first, probably up to. Some third. people still don't know what the, the difference between a verb and a noun is. That's true. Well, let's end it with a verb. Listen, I've learned. Listen, listen, listen. I've learned. I'm going to keep it real with you. I've learned a verb and a noun when I went to high school, in all honesty. Because um, the thing is, I've, I've learned that. Because um, most of my time, like I said, when I was in elementary school, I used to, like, draw a lot. But when it came to writing, and, 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 it, and it projects when it comes to um, my sermons, um, the way that I preach, the way I deliver, that's when I knew the difference between a noun, of course, it's an action word, and, 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 um, no, no, oh, no, I'm so sorry. A verb is an action word, excuse me, right? A noun is a place or thing, you know what I'm saying? A person, place, or thing. thing. That's, that's what I said, don't, don't play me. You feel me? I know I'm Somebody smart. Somebody gotta come. I, I, I know I'm smart, you feel me? I'm on that time here. But, um, oh, you see, she just said, you know, great host. I think, you, she's, I, th I think she's suggesting you to become a host on the show. Ooh, your, your friend Naomi. <laughs> this is Naomi doing this. Do you see how she's doing this to you? I didn't do nothing. Naomi, so, she put it in your glass. <laughs> so, um, the thing is that what I wanted to ask you in regards to that, that's, that's when I started really learning in high school. And, um, because I didn't pay attention when I was in elementary school, unfortunately. So, you're saying the blame is not on the teachers for not It's teaching. on me. It's on, it's, it's on me, but you know, when you, when you go to high school, that's when you learn, listen, the reason why after high school is college. Mm -hmm. So you got to step your game up. You got to step your game up. I was a B and a C student when I was in elementary school. I was an A student. I'm not going to lie, math was like my worst subject, but English, social studies, I was on it. Shout out to the viewers, because y'all really commenting today. Yeah, facts, facts, facts. Like, you didn't have a lot to do with this. Exactly. And, 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 and she had the nerve to say I was shy. But anyway, it's a different situation. Your cousin just asked a, a statement. She said, it's, it's, it's not teaching properly. It's just that the state demands so much other things that there's no time. Yes. Whoever said that. That's yes. your cousin, your cousin. Your cousin. We don't have time. Right now, right after this, I have to co-plan with my teachers for tomorrow's lesson. Right? I have to look at like 10 different IEPs right, in order to differentiate the lesson. We don't have time. On top of that, we have another class which is called advisory. So that's the social emotional aspect that they're trying to fit into the children's schedule. Wow. There's a lesson plan for advisory. We have to call parents, you know, we have to contact them. And there's a, a lot of responsibility on teachers. Man, salute to you, man. For all we the major things we did to teachers, man. Yo, me we too, love you. me too. That's why I go, I always go visit one of you now. When they see me like, oh my God, I'm so proud of you. You're the pastor now. I'm tired to be a big vaca, bro, y'all. Keep it in real. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mike yeah. says something. He says, you can seek info through word of mouth. You can always find a connect. Nowadays, you, nowadays you can find anything on YouTube in regards to sources. Are you in agreement with that as well, too? I still believe in human resources. Human resources are your best resources. Um, yeah, YouTube can teach you a lot of things. Facts. You can read articles online, but I, I attribute a lot of my success today because of the people around me. Mm. Like, I mean, when I think of like <clears throat> my Brooklyn college years and mm. going through the teaching fellows program and having to pass all my my, the test to get my license. Yes. You know, even making it through the program is because of people. Mm. It, it was the people. So I, I say people are the best true. resources. I wanted to ask you, what is education? If somebody asks you what education is, what is education? Mm. Deep question. Education is teaching you mind, body, and spirit. Feeding all aspects of your mind, body, and spirit. Okay. Why do I say that? Because I didn't learn about my health, like education-wise, what foods are important to eat, what kind of food to put into my body. I did not learn that in the classroom. 
I learned that through reading books. Mm. So you're saying that education starts at home? Self-education. Self-education. Okay. Education, true education feeds your mind, body, and your spirit. Exactly. Okay? So a lot our classrooms feed our minds. Mm -hmm. You know, we learn facts, math, history, ELA, all right? Um, I feel like the Bible, and realize I said the Bible, not the church, the mm -hmm. Bible feeds our spirit. It educates us and feeds our spirit educates our spirit and you can learn through books and follow uh you know you can learn through books um how to feed your how to educate your body that's how i learned that's why i'm saying books how to feed your body so i think that's what true education is is feeding all three of those uh, areas shout out to sister Mina. she says majority of kids that are born here they're having a lot of troubles when they start college. They're un unable to write a paper, turn paper, they're forced to take ESL or drop out. That's, that's, that's real. Is this okay? That's a fact. Like, you know why? It's because nowadays we speak with such poor English that it translates into when we write. Some mm. of us write the way we, we talk. That's facts. That's because we break English to the most minuscule decimal. I feel like when we speak, it makes our vernacular poor when we actually translate it into writing. Facts. That's real, that's real, that's real. I wanted to ask, um, what, what would you suggest to a parent in suggesting a school? Public school? Home school? Um, what, what was the other? Private school. Private school charter charter school. school. What would you suggest? Or religious school. Religious school. Wait a minute. What's the difference between private school and religious school? There's private schools that are just like boarding schools, like they're like they're expensive, but they're for the prestige, pompous kids. Yeah. And then there's the religious okay. schools that's like different. It's, it's, not, it's not Catholic or Adventist or oh, Baptist. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. See, now I'd like there's a whole thing now with school choice, like having options, which is real. I mean, which is great, I guess, for parents and teachers, but I really feel like. The government really should invest more into public education. And I'm not saying that because I'm a public school educator. Okay. I'm really saying that because you're investing in like so many different areas of schools, right? But not to cut you off though, but in areas that are more affluent where richer people live, the education is better. The public schools is better because those people have more money, so they're paying more taxes. So the schools is better. Right. And so wow. why and and that that creates a problem because people and that's where classism comes in because people who have more money get better education. People that have more money get better everything. And, and so now the government, right, the federal government right now, they're they're Instead of pouring their investments into one thing, they're pouring their investments into many different things. So charter schools are public schools federally funded. They are? Yes, they are. So, so what's the difference between a charter school and a private school? A public school? They don't... Charter schools are under a contract. Oh. Okay? Charter schools have to prove that their students can achieve more than public school students. Okay. And if they don't meet their contract, then they, they have to close their school. So they're under a strict contract. It's almost like a non-for-profit. They, they, they get a federal grant, but they have to meet certain numbers yes, and qualifications. Yes, exactly. And... Shout out to Puff Daddy. He just opened up a charter school in Harlem. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, <laughs> my, my man watches and prays. Um, yes. That's interesting. So, so my thing is that, so my thing is that with, with, with charter schools, it's basically under contract. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, wow. it's under contract. And right now, I think the number is like 17% um, of students do in charter schools do better than public schools. How, how so? I'm not, I really, I mean, part of it, because I know teachers who are, who teach at charter schools, so I know the hours are longer. I know the demand. They pay more, though. School, right? Do you think? No. I, I, I've heard that they pay more, but I really don't think the pay is worth it mm. because you put extra. I'm talking about the responsibilities, and I'm a, a public school educator. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you hear me like venting, right? Imagine a charter school teacher, you right. know, longer hours, just more responsibility. So, 
the turnover rate I feel in the charter school is is just it's way more than in a public school. Like so teachers quitting, more, twi you think? teachers quitting, um, new hires, and oh, in, in charter schools. In charter schools. Why is that? A lot of, be, okay, one is because in charter schools, I don't think they, the, they can take you even if you're not fully licensed, you know? In a public school, you can rest assured that all of the teachers who teach your students are fully licensed. And even if they don't have their master's degree, they're working towards their master's degree. But in a charter school, they can still accept a, a teacher who still has one or two more exams to take. You understand? Mm -hmm. So they're not, they're not fully licensed teachers. Okay, wait for a minute. Somebody said, I want to just get to a comment. Um, Milan, Sister Milan, I'm going to give a shout out to you again. She says, we need to go back to basic. Our education system is falling behind. We need to focus on the children's needs in order to strengthen our education. I know you agree with that. Yeah. Yes. Um, my man Jeffrey says, more responsibilities. In what way? Charter schools in, in East yeah. I'm, I'm assuming, yeah, I'm assuming that. Okay, so I'm not a charter school um, teacher, so I can't fully um, expound on the extra responsibilities. The one thing I do know is that the hours are definitely much longer mm -hmm. than in a, in a public school. Um, yes, your home girl Naomi says, unfortunately, if public administration isn't meeting the needs, parents will have to step up. That goes back to what we were saying before, that parents need to self-educate their children now. But how about parents don't have an education? Mm. That's another thing, too. But as long as they're alive, they can still learn. Exactly, exactly. Because, say for example, if your parent is interested in reading and educating themselves, you're going to take up that. No, facts, facts, yeah. facts. That's true. Let's dive into a little bit deeper. Okay. Now, now, yeah, we've gone deep. You see, I've been, you see, I've been good. You see? I, uh, they you can't say nothing. Wait. They, they <laughs> see? All right. The Bible tells us that knowledge and understanding comes from God, and it's God that provides understanding and knowledge see? to you. And the Bible is the first form of education, a book passed from generation to generation. Amen. So how has the Bible and your spirituality assisted you within your career? Okay. Not even in my <laughs> career, but in my life. Okay. Like, okay, when I was in high school, I had a really bad attitude. And many of my very close friends, like, really shout out to my, my close How friends. How come I never seen it? My I bad attitude? Never saw your bad attitude. I have, well, I don't I know. I never saw your bad attitude. You was always nice to me. I thank you. I appreciate that. But since when? I never saw it though. In high school. Okay, maybe in high school. Junior high. Not, not in church though. Not as an adult. I don't know. Not as an adult. No, I've never seen it though. I, it was bad. So. Wow, I, I, don't, I don't remember. I remember and, you were always sweet. That's what I remember. <laughs> thank you. Yes. So um, many of my friends would tell me, like, Judy, you have a bad attitude. You need to change. Like, my mother would tell me, attitude pa bon. Like, sh they would. And I, I didn't see it. Okay. I didn't see it. And um, why, why, and why, why think that was? You think why, why put that up for? We have blind spots. Okay, okay, I understand. People we all have, have balls. Yeah, we have spots. Spots. We're but, like a pitcher, right? If it's too close to your face, you can't see it. Sometimes it, it takes a step back, or the yeah. people that's a step back that's Facts. able to see the bigger picture. Right. Facts. So, so, junior year of high school, I remember um, I lost an opportunity due to my bad attitude. And that's when I realized, okay, something needs to give. So, I didn't turn to my teachers, that's one. I didn't mm. turn to my parents, that's what, home education. And I didn't turn to my church, that's what, spiritual education. But I, I had a book that one of my close friends, I, I saw her reading it, and I, I saw the title, and I was like, can I have that book? And do you know what the title of that book was? What? Lord, change my attitude before it's too late. Wow. Literally, that was the title of the book. Wow. And I was like, I need, a, I need that book. Mm. And it was that book that helped me and really transformed my mind. It went into, like, the, the attitudes that the people of Israel had, like, complaining attitude, a critical attitude. Arrogance. You know. Bouginess. Just doubt, a doubting attitude. And it gave you the, the opposite. So a critical attitude needs to change to a love attitude. A doubting attitude needs to change into an attitude of faith. And so it was through that book, and I mean, I was pouring into that book, and I think it was that experience that transformed me. 
you know, and it was that when you asked, like, that, that was how the word of God right. transformed my life. Right. And, and I would say that was really the beginning of my faith. So in a way, you have to be broken, as in the old you have to be broken for God to come back and fix you and then make you a better person. Yep. Then that helped you in life as you grew up. Yes. Basically, um, shout out to Yolanda Torres. She says, she says, she says, we need to put our focus on the teachers and knowing how the parents and know how we the parents can step up, can step in. The teachers are being underestimated and underpaid. Other individuals are giving care and knowledge to our family. Teachers, that's where we start. How do you feel about that comment? I agree. I agree 100%. I do believe, though, that there, there are going to be times in your life, like I just explained, where... Um, I got Mr. Milan. <laughs> you know, we do I need to te put teachers on a pedestal. More of a pedestal. I agree. I do believe that we do need to I treat them like trash. Right. My God. We, we don't get a lot of credit. Facts. So yes. Um, but Facts. there's going to be times where even um, the teachers won't be there to help you. Your parents won't be there to help you. Your pastor won't be there to help you. Facts. Who are you going to turn to? You know, and that's, I believe. And that's why we have, we have the community, you know, the village. Right. Um, oh, Mila says, but most, most of the parents are working two or three jobs. They don't have time to, they don't have time to go to school or learn. Do you think about that comment? Mm. I agree with her, too. You can, never have, you can never not have time to learn. Me, I, I use myself as an example. Facts. Me, even when I'm at work, I'm still learning. What I do is I put one headphone in, I listen to YouTube, watch informative videos, I search the net, look up stuff. I learn something new every day. Even by just reading the news on Yahoo News, I always learn something new every day. Facts. And, and not only formal education, you can learn from other people, like... I learned a lot from little Jeremiah, and he's what, four. I learned a lot from him, and then he learns from me. So it's like, you can learn in every different ways. It's like, it's like what God told Job. God told Job that, look at the birds. The birds don't worry, but they eat every day. So mm. why? You don't think you're more important to me than the birds? Mm. So it's like, it's the simple things. We just overcomplicate You know, it. I like this quote by Mark Twain. He says, a man who graduates and stopped learning the day after is uneducated day before. Mm -hmm. I said it again. A man who graduates and stops learning the day after is uneducated the day before. So learning starts at home, and whatever you retain prior before you graduate, if you have not applied it, you wasted your time. Deep. One, one of the most renowned scholars, Socrates, he said, the only thing I know is that I know nothing. Ooh. Basically means that there's always, <laughs> there's always more to learn, regardless of what you think no, there's always more to learn. Shout out to the viewers. Yeah, I see the numbers. Are, the numbers are real out there. Listen, who comes for Judy to who comes for Judy to be a co-host? Because she got the numbers in. She, she got, got the numbers. Hey, are you popping? Like I said, I've never seen a bad attitude. Maybe because Judy knew I was on. I was already on that time and already. You feel me? But I never. I always sort of be sweet. You know, I'm a nice guy anyway too. You feel me? So I never saw that anyway. Oh, you see? Oh, yeah, you see that on me? Me, she wants you to be a co-host. <laughs> <It's> Naomi. <laughs> Shout out to Naomi. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I want to just ask you this too. I wanted to ask you basically this. So, um, as a teacher, what is what is your plan? What is your goal to give back to all your students? Because your students are going to remember. You know that, right? Yeah. Oh, actually, um, so I was teaching eighth grade yeah. last year, right? Yeah. And so I'm teaching high school now. One of my eighth graders is in the high school Whoa. that I'm at right wow. now. And so I teach 10th and 11th grade. Wow. So she's in ninth grade currently. So she's going to have me again when she gets to the 10th grade. Wow. So, yeah, and I even... Um, and I'm sure she's a good student, right? Oh, she gave me issues, but I love her. <laughs> I love her. Okay, okay. And um, some of them, even from 8th grade, like I, you know, were friends on social media. Like I have them on Instagram. Like I love my kids. Like wow. I love my students. So, yeah, I, I cried um, during the eighth grade graduation. It was very emotional. You're going to leave a long-lasting impact in their life. Yes. And some of these kids are going to see you more than they see their parents. Right. And with great power comes great responsibility. That's from Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, like, my junior high school teacher, Mr. Grant. Mm. Mr. Grant, he was a real one, this big black dude. And he was like a father to me. He was mad cool. And when, every time I would act up, he would come and he would pinch me. And I look at this guy like, does this guy dead pinch me? <laughs> One day I went home, I told my dad. I was like, I was like, this guy pinched me. So my dad came into school and was like, you pinched my son? He was like, yeah, because he's acted up. He don't want to learn. He was like, that's right. Keep pinching him. <laughs> and, then, and then, like, I remember one time, like, I was walking to, I was walking to a train station to go to work. Yeah. This is like 
she's this is like 10 years later 10 12 years later no more than that this was like 15 years later i saw mr grant and i was like hey mr grant what's up mm -hmm. and I was like, what's up oh i see you changed a lot i said yeah i have like, mr grant th this is all because of you in a way yeah. yeah, and I was like, I remember you used to pinch me all the time. I said, yeah, and you needed those pensions. I said, yeah, you right, because without those pensions, I wouldn't be here. So I had mad respect for Mr. Grant. He was mad cool. I remember I got my first dub, Mr. Grant class. <laughs> <in the> class. <laughs> this girl gave me a lap dance. And That's real. We was always safe now. We was always holy. In my eyes. We, we was always holy. Don't get it twisted. Let this story. And my eyes rolled in the Facts. back of my head, and I was like, uh, <laughs> 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 I was the girl, 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 I, I, I want to own my wife when I was 12. Facts. You see, exactly. So, testify. <laughs> my man Jeffy says, it's crazy how teachers are closer to their students than we are in junior high school and high school. Thanks for making a big impact, my man. Just said. Shout out to Jeffrey, because Jeffrey was my neighbor. We was also in school together. I remember Jeffrey. You remember old baby Jeffrey? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we was copping those old Nanagi sweaters. We are in school, and we thought we was fly. We thought you was so fly by age. So, Facts. shout out to Jeffrey. Yo, some good Facts. Times. Definitely, definitely. You scored it. Whole rep too. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. My man, my man, my man, just give me that. He looks like the old Navy. The old Navy jeans. Wow, wow. Wow. Oh, man. I, 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 I wanted to ask this. So, um, this is what I wanted to ask. I wanted to ask so in regards show, to... Good looks, bro. We're working on it. We definitely, have episode definitely. 14. God is good. We start off in the basement. In the basement, then the library. Yeah. Then Jock's shout place. Yo, shout out to Jock because he held us down he for did. a good amount of time. Mm -hmm. Then now we got the official, official spot. So we're looking for a, 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 a woman co-host. We're looking for that. We need a beautiful sister like Judy. We're also that, looking for a I mean, man, a sound person, and a graphic art designer. And we need a promotional team because the show is getting big. You, you see it. It's getting bigger. Yes, and we need to participate. And also, anybody want to participate in the love team? Um, come through. We want your support because we cannot do no um, um, and, um, initiatives without your contribution because it takes money and um, your 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 participation. So we can right now. So so give what you can. So is this the right time now to ask that question that I asked? What, what question is what question is that? Wait wait hold on. Let's just answer that one time. Oh, Miss Miss Miller said Miss Miss Fisher was my ESL teacher in high school. She did right by us by teaching and all that she did. It's true. Like I said, teachers are amazing. Teachers are phenomenal. I remember my kindergarten teacher, Miss Janet. I love Miss Janet today. I love all my teachers from Mr. Parfield, from my man, uh, Mr. Magic. When I was in 189, there was a guy named Mr. Magic. <laughs> and I'm going Mr. Magic. It's Mr. Jean Baptiste. My mom was like, listen, you need to go to Mr. Magic. I said, I'm already, I don't, I don't know what Mr. Magic. He used to whip the kids with his ruler. <laughs> my brother had him though. But, I mean, you can't do that no more in public school anymore. Yeah, he but, you know what I mean? <laughs> He was a great teacher, and he loved his students like his kids. You feel me? He whipped them, and, 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 and the family was like, oh, yeah? Mr. Magic whipped you? We whipped you? Okay, let me whip you, too. You feel me? Because he's like, I hate you, But Mr. Magic, Mr. Jamatis was a great teacher, awesome teacher, loved to laugh, good, good man. So I want to just thank all the teachers who've contributed to all our lives and stuff and like that. shout out to my sister. She's a special ed teacher, too. Yes. Shout out to her. And shout out to Jonathan Kwaku. That's the... That's the history teacher. Yeah. Brother gets you glued in when he's preaching and teaching. I wouldn't mind. I, I wouldn't mind doing over class for you, my man. I'll go back for you, you know? Because <laughs> he's, no, he's really done. He really captures your, your attention and stuff like that. He preaches and teaches. And his back, his voice. What they really want from me. I call him Kermit the Frog. You know Kermit the Frog? <laughs> so ask the question. So the question was, the real word. Yeah. Okay, I want to go first? I can add, yes. Our mission is exactly what the title is, to keep it real and to reach the whole entire world. Yes. Like, we started this in the basement. We didn't think that no one was going to watch. We didn't think no one was going to pay attention. Facts. But, like, Sanders always tell me, 
boy, you got influence, boy. You got influence, you got influence bro. Facts. You got influence. And, and Sanders got influence. And Sanders Facts. Is, Sanders know how to captivate people. Yeah, and if, yeah. if you're not listening to him, he'll come up to you and talk to you ten times until you listen. So <laughs> Sanders could do that. Like, exactly. wherever, it's like we Moses and Aaron. Yes. We're, we're, wherever I like, he picks it up. And together, Vice versa. We work and we do God's work. Yes. Just like Moses and Aaron. Facts. So we didn't think no one was going to listen. We didn't think no one was going to pay us no mind. But once we started, we seen the views. The views went up and up and up and up. The show started to progress. And... I think Sanders life because he was consistent. It's one thing for me to be consistent because Sanders used to do his live while walking down the street. He still does it sometimes. I used to do the live in my bedroom and we was like, let's do it together. So we started off in the basement in my little room when I was still single. Then after that, we moved to the library. Things changed in both our lives. And then we kept going to the library and then John was like, yo, why don't you use our studio and make it a little bit more professional? We started working. We kept working. God's been blessing us. People started to take interest in the show. We started to get new guests on the show, because when we started, no one was really trying to deal with us like that. Yeah. But shout out to everyone that came on the show at the very beginning. Shout out to all of you. Definitely. And like, we just kept consistent. And you know, we people we used to complain about the lights. We got lights. We used to complain about Official. the speakers. We got speakers. People complain about the mics. We got mics. And you know, like, we just kept growing. God was good to us. And eventually, we found Jeff. And Jeff hooked us up with this studio. Now we got everything here. Um, I got the tripod from this China guy. I got the amp from this Spanish guy in the Bronx. And I got the mics from eBay. <laughs> and, you know, God has just been working. And the, the real word, so it's thousands of people watching. Not, not tens, not hundreds, but thousands now. So we're reaching thousands of people yep. every week. And we're consistent. And like you said, there's people tuning in every week to watch the show. And we're giving a voice to the voiceless, people that's not able to speak. And we're talking about real issues, issues yeah. that they duck in the church that they don't want to talk about, <laughs> issues that the pastors are scared to talk about. We're really talking about it. We're talking about real world things. We're talking about politics. We're talking about news. We're talking about religion. We're talking about things that young people deal with and things that need to be addressed and things that need a light shined upon them. So we're bringing it full funnel to your household. You could look at this in the comfortable and the comfort the ability of your home. No one really has to know who's watching because we don't see who watch. We just see the view. So all you haters that's low key watching, keep watching because ah, 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 ah. shout out, to the, ah. shout out to the supporters. Ah. Shout out to everybody that's watching and everybody that's been supporting the show. And we don't only talk, we do. Shout out to Diaper Drive. You remember? Yes. yes. We gave over 3,000 wives and 2,000 diapers over 50 families. families. So we not over here just talking. We making a movement. Like, like I said, we, we, we also, to add on to what my brother's saying, we want to do a lot of community service initiatives. We have a lot of things coming up. Whoever want to join the love team, inbox myself or inbox my man, um, Ricard, which is very, very important. Because let me tell you something. This is a movement. This is a love team. We want to give back. A lot of people are hurting in the community. People need to see God. People need to feel God. And it's not about us. This is a platform for you. And no one else is doing this. I'm so saying this. Facts. If you used to quit this tomorrow, we're like, I'm not going to do this tomorrow. We're getting money. No one's, yeah. no one's going to pick this up. Nobody, yeah. Nobody's going to pick this up. No one's going to do it. Yeah. You know why? Because you know no one's brave enough. No one wants to take the risk. No one wants to do this. This is for you. Come in the show. And what? Don't be shy. And what Bishop T. J. said. He said, "Do what makes you happy and do what makes it fun." And yes. Eventually, come, you'll get come. To do Judy this. did a good job. We need more Judys here. I have to say, I'm very honored to be in the presence of these two gentlemen. Oh, you queen. You, you guys are phenomenal. Like honestly, I remember when I reached out to uh, Ricard about that prayer, and. He came. Oh, now you remember. <laughs> you know, like, I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. I remember crying about the kids. I remember no, you wasn't crying. <laughs> him over to, you know, I just really felt like the young adults needed just a time for us, an intimate place for us to pray. And I invited Ricard because I saw his videos. He was posting videos of himself preaching on Facebook. I'm like, wow, like. He's really doing good. So I'm like, you know, let me let me invite him. So honestly, that night, it was no one else came but Ricard. And I was kind of embarrassed. I'm like, dang, like, I wanted him to see that we were a group. I wanted him to see that, like, we were really committed. But he was just the sole person who came. And we actually had a prayer. Like, we sang songs, we uh, read songs, and we prayed. And I was really, really so humbled by Ricard coming, just, just coming to the location, 
like to stay in for the, the period of time and for wow. praying with me. And it just, I just really had my respect for him just increase. And I mean, if you hear Ricard pray, anybody who ever hear Ricard yes, pray, the power, I mean, the power of Ricard's prayer of the Holy is Ghost. so amazing. Yes, and Lord. Just, thank like, you, thank you. Amen. Ricard, you are powerful man. Yes, yes. In person. Yes. Did come last month. <laughs> I did. Yeah, so yes. Yes. I didn't say, but it was bad for that thing. Praise the Lord. And Sanders has always, always has been community driven. Sanders, since I've known him, we grew up together, went to the same church, always has been passionate about young people, passionate about community service. And I'm just, just really, really blessed and just honored to be in the presence of these gentlemen. Vice versa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God is good. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I just wanted to ask this. We talked about, um, so is it really true that different communities, they fund, like if you're a certain area, if you're like a black area, they don't fund as much more than a, than a white community. Is that true? That's facts. Because if you go out wow. on the island in certain counties, those certain counties, they pay higher taxes. And that's why property taxes are so high in those counties. And the schools is better. Cause, and those schools... The people within our neighborhood gets paid more, so then therefore the schools is better, like they're way better, and wow. that's just what it is. Like, And that's like in a lot of communities. And I even had a conversation with someone who went to a private school, the, the private boarding school that you were talking about was yeah. not a religious school. And when we were just talking about our experiences, I went to Clara Barton High School. Shout out to Clara Barton. Yes. But I remember. Clara Barton. Come on. That's my little cousin, Don't bring me back those days. I'm safe now. So, and I remember in our conversation, like telling th this person that, you know, I remember I loved global history. Mm, that was my too. favorite subject in high me school. Too. And they, it was a group of students, and the teachers saw how enthusiastic we were about global. Yes. And they were like, you guys should take AP European history. And, you know, they, the teacher reached out to the administration and they said they couldn't offer that class to us because they didn't have the funds. And it was just so disappointing. Wow. Whereas this other individual that, I'm, that I was talking to in his private school, he was taking like six AP classes just in high school alone. And I'm just like, what? And so I, didn't even, money, money. I didn't even take one AP European history class. And so that just showed me that... Yo, Patricia. <laughs> Hi, Patricia. Just all the pregnant girls in Clyde keep their babies. No abortion. <laughs> no! Funerals <laughs> don't count and abortions don't count. Yes. <laughs> I can't, I can't. But it's true. They do give birth to their, they did give birth to their babies. Wow, that's true, that's true, that's true. I want to give a shout out to um, Sister Milan. We would definitely keep you in prayer. We're definitely going to have Ricard close with prayer. Don't worry about that, Sister Sandy. Your sister feels it's going in tonight. We want to appreciate the love and everything like that, definitely. It's funny, like, where you meet people, because when I was working at a law firm, she was my office manager there, and that's wow. how I met her. So she gave, me my, she gave me my first opportunity out of college. She gave me my first job out of college, so shout out to her for that one. We might not have always gotten along, but she, she, she took that chance by giving me that job for a well-known company. And it helped me to be the person that I am today. And look at where we are right now. And she's still here with me. So shout out to you, Sandy. Amen. I, I wanted to ask, do you still have that prayer group? So we are, Naomi and I, looking to start it this fall. So to restart it again. Okay. So if anyone is interested in okay. praying for with young adults, for young adults, you know, you could just stay tuned. We'll keep you posted. This is going to be under the NEC Franco Haitian Youth Federation. Wow, wow, wow. Patricia says that I feel there's more support in the white school, she says. And she said, honestly, look at, at who's going to the PTA meetings. Oh, yeah, yes. Yes. The parents need to show up to the, to the PTA because... And the community the, board members, too, she No, says. but my dad, you... God, yo, when I look back, I believe, you know, we don't, we're no, not no, no, grateful no, 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 for no, no. our parents in the, at the time, listen, but when you look back... I'm grateful. Listen, I got a couple of whippings in my school. Shout out to Haitian parents. My dad went to PTA <laughs> listen, meeting. Listen, listen. I was like, Dad, what are you doing? Yo, listen. My dad showed up. My listen, dad, you got to show concern. You got to show concern. I mean, I feel, I feel like um, in the Haitian context, I feel Haitians are very big on the three L's. Lakol, Lakai, Legli. They're big on they're big on home 
after home, they're big on church, they're big on God, and they're big on school. So I think, you know, my mom, my dad, you know, just having a high school diploma, they instill in us having an education, um, um, reading books, writing, um, seeing the world, being open-minded, um, learning unity, because that's something that, that we lack as a people, and I think that's the reason, one of the reasons why Haiti is back. Other, the mere fact that there's a lot of people, like the oppressors, like the, the powers that be that want to destroy the country, but I feel like if we have togetherness, we're together more, we build each other more, because educations are the most educated people you oh, will meet in, 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 in the world, yeah. and we have contributed a lot to society. The great doctors, the great lawyers, yeah. you know what I'm saying, are, are Haitian people there. Yeah. In America, there's something called think tanks where they pay people just to sit around and think. Back in the days, they had them called scholars. Like now, we have road scholars where they just pay you to study yes. and you look up things and you Research. study things. Yeah. Oh, I don't mind that. I need uh, extra no. money. Um, the thing is, it says, but don't, but but the parents don't know how much of a difference a, a PTA meeting can be to. Uh, she said, but the parents don't know how much of a difference a PTA meeting can be to the child's future. Is 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 that is is, is there a big difference when they go to PTA meeting? Listen. listen. <coughs> I came from a bilingual school, and, and listen, we're all Haitian here, right? And yeah. I came from a bilingual school. You have the notice going out, right, on yeah. a piece of paper, at, you know, at the end of the day, you have them, make sure your parents get this, make sure your parents come out, you know, and, okay, how, realistically, how many of the kids are really going to give their parents the notice? Right? Some kids stashed in How many cards, yeah, kids how many bad. kids are going to give their parents the notice? They changed the grades. How many of the, the parents, it, even if they uh, saw the notice, have time? Like we were talking about our job their job responsibilities. How many of them actually are going to have time to go out? Usually the PTA meetings are in the evenings to go to their child's school. Like I, I really don't fault the parents for not being able to make it out. I really don't. Because we're talking about class here, right? The, the parents of the Caucasian or the most affluent kids who are able to go, I'm just making a generalization, but I imagine that their mothers maybe... It's crazy. My man Mike just said, Patricia, you're right. When I go, mostly mothers is in the PTA meeting. Mothers like who have time, who are stay-at-home moms, and whose you know, husbands are working, things like that. Again, it's a generalization. You know, I'm just from... Stay My facts. understanding, you know, facts. so, however, we, because of our class, we are working class, exactly. we are working class, our parents are working, you know, so they may not have as much time to attend these meetings as much as they would want to, it's not that they don't want to, they mm. just cannot. They're working. They're working. Like, my dad used to work so much, like, he missed a few of my graduations because he had to work. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. My, my, man said, my man said, I'm usually the only father there. I can only assume most students have single parents, my man said. Single parent. That's what I'm telling you. I promote marriage, baby. Marriage. Do you, think, do you think a kid coming from a single parent home affects their ability to learn in school? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. But listen to me. God can overcome any flaws. That, I mean, we all grow up in dysfunctional homes. Single home two-parent households, we all grow up with some kind of, something that we're lacking, okay? Yes. But whatever it is that you feel that you are lacking or that, that the reality of what you're lacking, you can overcome it. You mm. can. With the Holy Spirit, with God, with the people around you, your yes. community, your church, you can overcome it. No, I mean, we, I mean, we all grew up on Ben Carson, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was like the SDA model. Uh, right? yes. He was the SDA model, yes. and he, he he grew up in a single parent home, Trumpism. right? He grew mm -hmm. up in poverty, Facts. and look, look where he ended up. Facts. So I don't I don't believe that the uh, the environment. Yes, the environment can cause a lot of deficiencies, Facts. but we can overcome it with the power of God. We shall overcome. One day we shall overcome the mighty God. The mighty God. We shall overcome. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> wow. I had a dream. <laughs> I had a dream that one day yeah. my five brothers and sisters who live within the totality, they will be blessed of God. No more God. The Spirit of God shall be blessed.
Oh no, can I get a hallelujah? Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> My man Mike says, students and children need both parents at home, same home too. Uh, Patricia said, this is why we have a church community. She asks, does it take a village to raise a child, right? Of course yes. it does. Yes. But a lot of you churches been slacking. I'm telling you. Yeah. We, we, I agree we need to be more community oriented. I remember my, my mom telling me when she grew up that like, the thing is that like the neighbors were like her mother and her father and stuff like that. Before you got a whipping from your father and your mother, they made sure they took some licks as well too. But they supported each other. They built each other. They empowered each other. Yeah. And that's what we need in our church. We don't yes. need... We don't need to be to ourselves because, it, 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 you know, in the island, we need everybody yes. to do their part. Like, um, do you guys know the story of Eric Tame, Thomas? Yes. Eric Ta E.T., the hip-hop preacher? Millionaire. Yes. yes. And so if you know his story, then you know that it does. it's not about how you were raised or in what kind of household you were raised. He, When he was homeless, he had a pastor come to him and say, you know what, you need to, to go to school. You need to go back to school, okay? You cannot be a, a dropout. And so the pastor took him under his wings, and look at where he is now. He went to Oakwood University, mm -hmm. you know, graduated, and in his stories, he says it. He's very transparent. It took him 12 years. But he did it. To graduate. It don't matter. A four-year degree. Consistency. You know? 12 years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's really up. about perseverance. Yeah. It's not about where you're from. It's not about what kind of household you grew up mm -hmm. in. Perseverance, yes. work ethic, character, commitment, those are the things that get you far in life. It took me six years to finish a four-year degree, but I didn't look at where I'm at. Look at how much people I'm able to bless. It God, took me God. five. It took me five. It so is, don't be ashamed. At the end of the day, don't be ashamed. At the end of the day, I would rather do 12 my bank account is large, then a person has four, Amen. and the bank account is like, yes. it's pennies. So yes. it's all about not where you come from, it's where you're going, it's not how you stop, it's how you finish. Exactly. Patricia's going off, so it's Patricia. She said, <laughs> she said so, so these single parents will be alright, just make sure they use all their resources. That's true. Yes, That's yes. Because, I mean, alright, I graduated from Brooklyn College with my bachelor's degree, and I took a year off. And during that year, it was the toughest year of my life. I had no plans to go back to school. Like, I just wanted to be done with school. Like I said, I took five years to, to finish, and I just was done. But obviously, you know, I majored in English, so there were, like, not a lot of opportunities for me as an English major, even though I had done tons of internships, I had a lot of connections, but it was still difficult. So I reached out to an aunt of mine who's in education, both her and her husband are teachers, and I reached out to her, and she was like, why don't you do teaching? And like I said, I was like, no, that's like the last thing I want to do. And um, I have another aunt who is an assistant principal at a middle school, and when I went to her, again, connections, human resources, I went to her, and she told me about the teacher fellows program, the NYC teacher fellows, so I looked into it, and they, um, they were going to teach you how to become a teacher, train you to become a teacher, wow. and they were going to, to, going to pay for half of your master's degree. So I was like, why not? So I entered into the program, did the training, and like I said, took my three exams to get my license, and it was my aunt, the, the first one that I went to, she was that constant encouragement. Like, you need to just go through it. When I was like, I can't do this. I don't want to be a teacher. This is not for me. Like, she was like, you have to pray with me, sung, sang with me. Like, when I was just really about to give up and quit and just, just call it quits, she was there for me. So it definitely does take a village to raise a child. It was not my my parents as much as they did for me they helped me get through college but it was my connections with my assistant principal aunt it was my my praying aunt wow. you know and everybody else who was surrounding me who helped me so I definitely think like please please take advantage of the people around you ask questions reach out ask for help that's what God put us um, on earth for to help one another to be there for one another Yo, that's deep. That's deep. I remember when when you were telling me that you were doing all those things and we prayed around that same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So again, shout out to Judith for coming. Shout out to the viewers. I see a lot of people. Watching. I see you, Masuka. This is Hi, Masuka. This is episode Masuka. 14. Masuka. You were supposed to be on the show, Masuka. Yes, young way, y'all. Stop playing games. We need a, right, listen, we need a woman host. We need two beautiful, virtuous sisters who, like, like, like Judith, you know? Yo, know, subscribe to the show, share this with your friends. Yes. You know? yes. 
we done passed tens, we done passed hundreds, we done passed thousands, we, we aiming for the millions. Amen. Yes. That's one of the goals is to hit a million. Are we going to hit a million? And to get our own TV show on TV, you know? We will. All right? So we just got to keep being consistent. Shout out to all the viewers. Shout out to everybody that's watching. Again, episode 14. We doing it. I think episode 20, we got to do, we just have like, like a big party or something like oh, that. Nice. Yeah. Oh! Oh, oh, she said, yo, she said, y'all didn't tell me, hi. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Patricia. Hi, <laughs> put it on glass, Patricia. <laughs> Patricia's the third the show. Listen, she's on the, the very first episode. Listen, listen, listen. she's been with us since day one. That, listen, that first episode has over a thousand. That's number one. And the thing is that we, listen, I, I want to, listen, 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 I want to emphasize it. God is doing something big with us. And I, I just sent it in my spirit. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me tell you something. It, it, it's not when the struggle, no one is here. Uh, you got to be here through the struggle. So when we're, when we're reaching success, amen, we all could eat. You feel me? So, 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 you gotta give yourself a Cuban so, 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 guys, so, guys, so, guys, come on. On the show for us. We want, this, 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 this. <laughs> we want, we want to share this opportunity and this platform with all you guys. Anybody who's into real estate, anybody who's entrepreneurs, anybody who's a doctor, lawyer, whatever that you're doing, we want to build a community of people. We want to support people because this is the platform is for you guys. So, we all can manger, manger. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> All right, so I think that's enough for the day. Anything else, guys, or we close out? Um, we should be good to go. Wow, it's around eight seventeen. Wow, we've been here for a long time. Wow. Yeah. All right. Um, so any closing words? Any closing thoughts? Um, just want to basically let you guys know this Saturday we have church at the Winter Circle Church. Come out, pop out. We have different initiatives coming out, um, and we want your, your, your participation and your contribution. We're going to have a Metro Car Drive October. We need your contribution and participation with that. Turkey Drive November, December Toy Drive. We need your help. Without you, this is not possible. And we're looking for a woman host. Sisters, sisters, I know you're there. Stop with this. I'm shy. Nah, come through. We need she said she was shy an hour ago, but we see the difference. <laughs> I was like, guys, y'all have to give me the questions in advance. Like, I got to prepare. Exactly. <laughs> Judith did a good job tonight. She did a great job. Yes. 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 I really want to thank Ricard and Sanders. And I know this episode was about education. We talked about a lot of things. I just want to encourage all my teachers out there, all of my students. Now that you've heard the teacher's perspective, I want you to have, you know, more reverence for your teachers. Facts. More reverence. Okay. And really uh, be sensitive to them. And my teachers, be sensitive to your students. Parents, if you were watching, you've heard all that we said about doing your best to support your child. You know, making the time, even if you can't, even if you can't, but reaching out to someone who can, you know, do your best to be um, supportive of your child. Like, it's really all about education. That's my passion. I just want to thank our, our guest, Judith. She did an awesome job. She was shy at first, but she did awesome once the camera came on. And people show the love. Shout out to everybody that came and commented, that watched, that viewed. Shout out to my co-host Sanders. He's always here supporting, pushing that initiative of community service. We, we're going to have that clothing drive and that toy drive in December. We're already collecting toys and collecting clothes. Shout out to Thanks. my son Brandon. He, he has a whole daycare collecting toys and clothes for that clothing and toy drop for wow. December. So okay. we're not playing. You see, once we start doing work, everybody wanted to join. Everybody's starting to join, and we do an initiative. All it takes is one people to start. Fast. And we started, and now everybody's joining in, and that's what it's all about. Team, together, everyone achieves more. Facts. I thank God for the glory and for the blessings, and there's an anointing on this show and the anointing on the lives of us right here. Sure. And it's through that through the grace of God that we're able to continue to do this and God is working, you know. We didn't do this ourselves and the show keeps building, the show keeps Facts. getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I just want you guys to share the video, subscribe, and just keep pushing the show. I appreciate Tamara for sharing the show and everybody else that shared the show. I got a couple shares. Shout out to everybody that's been watching. The goal is to hit a million now, you know. The most views we had so far is 9,000 views on one show. Yep. Because of a woman. Because of a woman. We Shout need out. more women. Total, yes. Total, I think we got, what, 20,000 views on the, all the shows? Yes. May, maybe even more. I think like 30,000. 30, that's, that's true. Yeah, because every episode has an average of 
two to three thousand views, mm -hmm. and we on episode fourteen. So fourteen times three, four, eight, twelve, three. You the teacher. So that's, like, not a for, 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 that's like what? No, we up to fifty thousand views. No, no, that's true. That's true. Yeah, we up to fifty thousand views I total. Think, I, th I think the least we have is the first show. And that's like, a like, like, like the last show that we, we had your boy here. That joint is close to two thousand already. Yeah, it's two thousand. That's what I'm saying. So, so and, we know up to fifty thousand views total. Yeah. So. That's by the glory of God, because I feel like I'm no one special. I feel like I'm a regular Nine man. Nine lines. I wake special. up and go to sleep like you know everyone else. So, shout out to everybody. Shout out to Jordan River. Shout out to the Winter Circle. Shout out to Whole Rep. Can't forget them. Shout out Facts. to Run. Shout out to Frank O'Haitian. Shout out to my family, my creed, my religion. Shout out to my God. And with that, we close out with a prayer. Heavenly Father that dwells in heaven, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for the anointing that you have placed upon this show and the anointing that you have placed upon my life, Judith's life, and Sanders' life. Help us to continue to do your work. Help us to walk with you. Help us to be living testaments of your glory to everyone that is watching, everyone that is seeing us as an example. Lord, help us to be that shining light in this world of darkness. Help us to stand out so that people can know that we are different. We were broken people, but with you, you came into our lives and you made us full. You made us full and you filled us up. Not only filled us up, but our cup runneth over and we was able to bless others. Dear Lord, we thank you for sending your only God and Son to die upon that cross. Yes. Because through him and through his blood we were forgiven. And because of the sacrifice that you made, our sins were forgiven and we we're able to still live. Lord, we are faulty as humans. We are faulty because we often sin and fall to temptation. But we know through you we can be saved. Dear God, we ask that this ministry carry on so that it can help others, help us to help the community, help us to help those around us and to make this world a better place. For this is not the real block, this is not the real street, this is not the real neighborhood, but this is the real world and the real world. And we're trying to help this world. We could have been using this platform to do negativity and spread hate and all kind of things, but we're spreading love, we're spreading education, and we're spreading your word. Yes. So dear God, we ask you to give us the strength to continue, help us to continue to be great, and help us to be the walking examples of you. Help us to bring more people into your light and to change the lives of others. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. So I thank you guys for watching. I thank Judith one more time. I thank my brother Sanders. Um, we see you next week at 7, 7.30. If you want to be on the show, comment, share this video, please. Um, subscribe to it. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. I see people now joining. You're going to have to watch this when we sign off. <laughs> so you can always come next week and yes. whoever want to be on the show just let me know just link us we in the studio in Bushwick shout out to Jeff and that's all folks mm -hmm.